Welcome. Um, my name is David Stout. Uh, during the next 90 minutes, uh, we're going to do the lightning round. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, DevOps, deployment, uh, all those good things. Uh, try to pump up a little energy into your Wednesday afternoon uh, you know, enterprise uh, business uh, conference. Um, so uh, I'm introducing here uh, Junie Murkiji um, from LifeLock. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, um, deployment and uh, best practices. Uh, um, uh, I, I'll have the mic, so uh, if there are any questions, let me know. I'll uh, run over and uh, we'll, we'll get them answered. Um, but uh, enjoy the session, and thanks. Thanks, Juni. Thank you. Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a consultant at LifeLock, which was recently acquired by Symantec. I'm here to talk about separation of duties, which is uh, also known as segregation of duties in the industry, specifically as it relates to a continuous delivery pipeline. So out here in the conference, uh, we don't need any introduction to what a CI CD pipeline looks like. But at the same time, I'll, I'll see if I can do a few basic things so that then things are in perspective and I talk about segregation of duties. So this, that's me. Um, I am a writer and I'm a speaker. My books on Amazon, my articles are on Quora and Tech Beacon if you, if you, if you take any interest. Uh, I've been speaking in a couple of conferences and then a few more this year. And I hope to see you again somewhere maybe. So segregation, separation of D, and I don't write duties here. There's a very specific reason. Um, before I get to the D, let me talk a little bit, little bit about Conway's Law. And then uh, very unexpectedly, maybe Maya Angelou's Human Family. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. Uh, poetry. So what we essentially say, we convey is organizations which design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations. Essentially what it means is architecture should drive the organization and not the other way around. So when we have administrative divides in our organization, and maybe you are getting a hint of what I'm getting to from the picture below, which is like almost looks like a relay race. If you have been like familiar with the Olympics, and how many times have we missed passing the baton, right? It's very common, and it's it's the handoff pattern that we typically show in an engineering organization. We have Dev QA tools, infrastructure platform release, infosec, operations, and you may be familiar with other names in wi by which we go by. We're basically trying to get the baton out, and then at the end of the line, we actually make some money when the product is in the hands of the customer. But if we miss passing the, watching the baton, we, we are not going to make that money as fast as we could have otherwise. So essentially, this check-in to go live, which is the red arrow going, is, is like a KPI, which says, how long does it take for my check-in to go live? go live as in the hands of the customer, and if we make a delay, then we, we, we are basically at a loss of losing money. So now, what does Maya Angelou say in this context? Like, this is almost, uh, I mean, shouldn't, I've probably never seen Conway and Maya Angelou in, a, in the same slide, and that too in a tech conference. Basically say, I note the obvious differences between each sort and type. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. So how does all this boil down to DevOps? So segregation, separation of D, and D is oftentimes mistaken to be departments. What, what this means is when department A does one thing, department B comes up to validate it and approve it. And maybe, you know, vice versa at other times. And this doesn't necessarily uh, help when we try to build a continuous delivery pipeline and when we are shipping software from source code rep repo to production, uh, that too, we are measuring velocity. You know, that, that's, that's the, the checking to go live is the key KPI of the pipeline. I, I just put some rough percentages, like maybe dev is involved 20%, maybe ops is 22, maybe QA is 20, but the, but the percentages are not important. The fact that it's a, fr it's a fragmented market makes it difficult for us. So handoff, sign-offs, and we are also, you, you must have seen the pattern to be write heavy. The, the more, more things happen at the end, the worse off we are. And the more people who get involved at the end, it, 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 it's like more expensive and we find a problem at the end of the pipeline. So 
and, and then DevSecOps. So we're, I'm basically building security into the design. It's essentially because if we build a product first and then put it up for certification, it's already done. So a bug can be called all a feature at that time, right? Like it's, it's very hard to go back to the whiteboard. So we have to be left heavy. So what does, what does that really mean? We're pulling up front some of the things that we typically do uh, towards the end. And one of, the, one of the very important things being security performance. These things often get, like, they stay disintegrated with the pipeline. Like people will say, I have those tests, but when the pipeline runs, there are stops and starts so that those tests can be run outside the pipeline. A single deployable artifact is usually, like we have, we've talked about microservices like for, uh, for almost two days now, and a single deployable artifact doesn't necessarily display a graphical pattern. Like it's a very linear pattern, right, when you're doing this check-in to go live. Basically, it's a component, uh, build unit test static analysis, the so validation at that point, whether like maybe it's, you can call it a certified component. Subsystems is a, like a, the smallest deployable and runnable unit, whereas the component in this context is the smallest distributable and testable unit. So when, when the subsystem gets deployed and maybe functional contract security performance tests are done, goes for like blue-green deployment and A-B testing and up and then out there into production in the hands of the customer. Uh, contrast that view with this view, which is more closer to real life, which is why we have been also talking about in some of my like fellow speakers where infrastructure is also code. Uh, the services that we build, like we've talked about APIs a lot in this conference, they, those are the services that are also checked into the pipeline. Obviously the tests and then the different product features that, uh, that are making their way to production. And then this is more a graphical pattern, and this is like a very simplistic view. Uh, this is just like a blueprint, like a domain model for a pipeline. When we put in an actual enterprise, like a heavily distributed system, I mean, I, I doubt if we can even use this entire wall to depict all the, the graph, the nodes, and the edges, and you know the, how, how the thing looks. And while a monolith isn't the right thing to do, but when we start breaking things up, essentially when we start strangulating that monolith, these services tend to become like a very distributed graph, and then the complexity might increase if you're not doing the right thing along the way. And this is like, uh, not everything fits in a slide well, I'm happy to talk to you afterwards. This is like, this, this diagram, like this is not the right forum to go through this. this. This almost takes like a talk in itself. But we can, we can take it offline if you want to discuss. Going back, so uh, in the con uh, also another myth is that this applies only to software. This definitely applies to firmware embedded systems. And the, uh, the, uh, the only takeaway that, that, that I want you to uh, like take away from this slide is that the rate of change initially is almost 50 times than, than like right here, if you can see, my, see my, where my mouse is. So while you're the modules and the libraries, th there are the subsystems, like the actual devices start getting involved. Devices act are the slowest part in a supply chain. So you are better off replacing that stage with emulators or maybe like 3D printed, um, 3D printed images of those devices instead of taking the real devices. Because how our supply chain works is if you want a quick change, like you find a problem, the supplier is almost always never going to show up right then with the new version of the device because that, it's not easy. It's, it's, just, it's just how our industry works at this time. So the early testing can be done with emulators and then you get into like, uh, you know, our fellow speakers have talked about like the cameras and the, the washing machines and everything else. They can come a little bit later. But it, I'm still following that same pattern as you see. It's like components. Uh, loosely coupled components become a subsystem and then loosely coupled subsystems become the entire system, which is the product, which is what we are trying to get into the, like get to our customer. 
So quickly getting into context, we have to step back a little bit to leap forward. So what does segregation of duties mean? And this is very important for developers to understand because when we go for audits, the governance, compliance, and the risk departments and enterprises will be asking us these questions. And then they will not allow the pipelines to go forward to production. And that's not what we want. So the concept of having more than one person required to complete a task I mean, just think of a real life example. Like if you have a joint account, both people need to sign the check before you can withdraw some of money. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the, it just re uh, relates to the second point, which is an internal control intended to prevent fraud and error. They're not doubting one of you. It's just how the process works. And separation of power is needed for unbiased governance and also disseminate the tasks, and I think this is the most important one, and associated privileges for business processes to multiple users. And then what does that, all that mean? All that is all great, like definitions are great, but what does it mean for us? So if there is a gate, right, it returns zero for success and maybe non-zero for failures, and the non-zero can represent the number of failures. So it can mean like, hey, so for performance, uh, designed and implemented by maybe operations, return zero, and then N1 for if the number of performance errors. Similarly, maybe the dynamic analysis security testing, which is typically done by InfoSec. Functional testing done by developers, mainly integration probably done by QA. And I'm not recommending that the engineering rec uh, like organization be split this way. But if it is, then we have to still get business going. And if everything is right in this gate, like all the zeros come back, the, the big center zero is then zero, because if you add all zeros, it becomes zeros. And the n is n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4. If you have any non-zero return, the main gate shuts off. It's that simple, and then it doesn't let you go. And then everybody has contributed to this gate, so you have separated the powers, and there is unbiased governance. So, I mean, this is just to, like, to the congratulations for making the last session of the day. This is mostly to, like, wake you folks up uh, in case you are sleeping. I don't think you are. So this is heavily inspired by Jamaica Farewell, and this is what happened when performance tests, or maybe any kind of test for that matter, like, just uh, replace performance with security. And if you remember that song, like, down the way, whether nights are gay, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this is something we did for after a sprint. But down the way, where the teams are gay, and I, I mean happy here, and the sun shines daily on the building top, I took a trip in my code commit ship. When I came to Perth, I made a stop. Oh, I'm sad to say I broke the pipe today. It won't be up for many a day. And stages down and heads are turning around. And I got to explain all of that in Stand Up Town. This happens quite a lot because those weren't integrated with the pipeline. Either the pipeline stopped or worse still, the pipeline just went ahead because it didn't know, right? That some of the tests were not even integrated with the pipeline. So this is one of the things that we can easily fix by integrating having gates, software gates, not human gates, and then just letting the pipeline do its job. So we are looking at a paradigm shift. It's like separation of duties. And what we are saying is we need processes code, and we'll take a look at it. Basically, pipeline is a product, right? This is the product that flows through the pipeline is the one that makes money. But if we don't treat the pipeline as a first-class citizen, how can we trust the pipeline to ship our products? This is quite obvious. And then software gates versus manual gates is the paradigm shift. We don't need a human to come and stamp the approval. We can have the pipeline decide for itself because we design the gates ourselves. The second one is organizational key performance indicators. We are all talking about KPIs. We'll also take a look at this. These are more facts than opinions. And organizational KPIs versus departmental KPIs. The third one, domain services with sharp interfaces, role-based access, departmental access. So if we, and we are actually, we can take a look at that. All, if we do all three very well, we can have segregation or separation of duties. I'm going to skip this one. 
so pipeline is code, the speed quality predictability. This is again like if you have the pipeline as code, that is basically process as code, it's that simple. And you can have it implemented with e either, uh, you can have AWS code pipeline, you can have Jenkins 2.0, which is the groovy based Jenkins file. Anything works and you see the gates making all the decisions and it's, it's very straightforward to implement and you have to fragment the model for maybe Java, um, I don't know, like you, you, you may have nodes and the Pythons, iOS and Android and works for everything the same way. The domain model is the same, it's just the fragmentation is different because the tooling is different. So we see one of those, any of those gates and when, when, I, when I showed the one example of the gate, you can implement any of those gates that way. KPIs, the organizational facts versus departmental opinions is, I'm, I'm not probably, let me see how much time I have. Okay, five minutes, good enough. So business value per print is, let's, let's just take it this one. So I've seen teams declare victory with number of releases or number of tests they have executed. So understand that from the customer's perspective, both of these two don't mean a single thing, right? I mean, you can execute 40,000 tests, you can have five releases in that spirit, doesn't really mean anything. What is the business value that you delivered is the, is the real thing. So when you have departmental KPIs, they kind of get biased towards that, owned, that department's success, but it doesn't mean anything for either the organization or the customer for that matter. So th we have to be careful when we design these kinds of KPIs. Another one that I like is the stability index. This is a tension between several metrics and it takes away the bias of one particular metric that may otherwise like weigh you down. So check-in to go live is the velocity of your check-in going live and the number of escape defects is basically the defects that were found outside the pipeline, which is like bad, like that was a mistest case or misunderstanding with the product owner. And then customer delight, you can measure with, let's say, how many defects have been filed by the customer, how many customers repeated year over year, or they just didn't sign with you anymore. So then these, all these kinds of metrics, and you could optionally even have weights, do a weighted average and calculate an index, and that index is then represent, representative of your organizational problems. I'm not going through each of them in the interest of time, but I can talk offline, as in how these KPIs are like the ones that decide whether the pipeline is going to move forward or backward without necessarily a human intervening. Um, the services interfaces, uh, the, services are, the services architecture is basically, we are all familiar with it, you have polyglot services that are necessar that, that, that don't necessarily, um, I mean, those are defined by sharp interfaces, but don't have to be produced by one central organization. As long as you honor the interface, anybody could come up with these services. And the examples of these services could be like, if you have a dashboard, you know, a log to dashboard. Uh, if you have like, pretty much anything like you're interfacing with like the artifact repository, the build server, the source code metric, which could be sonar, um, I mean, config servers, if you have, if you have, that's where you have your configuration, and then deploy artifact, manage your change request, these are all these services that can be developed by anybody in your organization, and then you could have like an anti-corruption layer, as in, deploy, art, like let's say publish artifact and your artifact repo change from artifact tree to Nexus, oh well, nothing happened because you were just giving an artifact ID and maybe the endpoint. So for the developer, it, it remains transparent even though the repo changed behind the scenes. So you could have these services defined with sharp interfaces with an anti-corruption layer built in, built in front to protect like uh, to, to prevent disruption of these services. Um, so quickly jumping to summary to see if we can leave some time for questions. So what are, what are the things we, can, we have to do well? So top one, the secrets, certificates, data, and I mean personal, like personally identifiable information, financial, uh, financial data. If you get exposed to financial data, even accidentally, you will become an insider 
and like that that's not something you want to do configuration logs etc should be protect like not everybody should be able to see it so here comes role based access so if your role is a developer there are things that you should not see and the pipeline should not expose these to you these can easily be set up with credentials and key management and somebody has to like infosec or maybe someone has to have access to those secrets and certificates so that the, these things can be set up for you and it's very easy for the pipeline to just obey the rules because you define those rules all of you define those rules as an organization and the pipeline just pretty much follows the rules and that's by far the most important and always have like audit trails turned on if you're using aws this would be like your cloud trail like never never switch it off um, decisions are gated by software not humans it's showed you an example of a gate that was done by software kpis drive decisions not not opinions nobody's opinions count here like these are data driven decisions devsecops is a shift left like you pull everything up front instead of leaving key things to happen at the end of your pipeline domain services and sharp interfaces influence access control so deployment calendar is a simple utility you can build saying i'm a retail company and i don't deploy to production on thanksgiving that's very simple you don't need a human being to come and tell you that that's a simple piece of software you can build into the code you don't get to edit the deployment calendar as a developer somebody in your organization sets up the rules right the pipeline simply follows the rules and then source code repo is the source of truth product test configuration data pipeline infrastructure whatever you have so with that um, that was that was a little uh, rushed um, uh, but that's just the way we are set up for today if you have any questions you can i have 40 seconds or you can just grab me offline thank you very much yeah thanks juni um a uh, lot of great stuff there uh, obviously a lot to get into um where can folks go to find uh, and, and learn more about these best, best practices and and so forth once they once they go home uh i mean there's cora there's 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 the book i'm writing as a book right yeah there's the book and there's the second book that i'm in the process of writing but there's there's a lot of stuff on the internet too yeah okay uh any questions from folks out there in the audience okay yeah, well, thanks thank you